boat for the river And all oh, my hands were cold That mighty river flowing Who knows where it was going And I, 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 I have to wait Struggle towards the land, oh, and this sparrow called me home, the sparrow called me home, and I felt the wind was blowing against the course that I'd been rowing. What is up, folks? Today is all about Sony Film Simulation Recipes. I gave you a quick little preview of just three of the 40 plus Sony Film Simulation Recipes that are available currently on the website. Here you can see you can instantly access over 40 custom Sony Film Simulation Recipes. But it's a decent amount of different Film Simulation Recipes that you can try out, and that's actually what I did way back in December of last year. That's when I first started trying them out on my A7S III, mainly for street photography, and then I just paid the 22 bucks and gained access to the whole community and the whole website uh, in January. As you saw in the opening there, I tried to choose three that were the most different, I guess, and how I did that is because on his website, in the store, you'll see here where he gives away for free these Sony film simulation charts. So they made these really handy dandy reference charts for both uh, the black and white picture profiles and the color picture profiles. And you know, you can kind of have a really nice reference and look at differences between tonalities and saturation. Now, I think his original intention for these was to be used for video, but me, I'm not really interested in that. I really just liked using them for street photography. So back when I first started using them with the A7S III, I was using uh, a different Sony film simulation recipe plugged directly into the picture profile menu. So if you have a newer Sony camera, you don't have to deal with LUTs or presets or any of that. You can literally fully customize a picture profile and dial in all of these um, customizations and settings that he came up with. So I'll give you uh, an idea. So when you gain access to the website, you'll see on there like something like this, okay? This is for Agfa Precisa. So this is just an Apple note that I created. So I leave both the charts at the top and then I put all the film simulations in alphabetical order. So I kind of like to organize them myself but also having them on an Apple Note. I don't have to worry about being somewhere and not having you know, good cellular service or not having Wi-Fi access because I already have them in a note. But also why I like to do it is because underneath each recipe, you'll see here what I showed at the top of this video, the little skin tone and color tests that I do. And I also do it in front of my window so I can see how it affects the highlights and the shadows and all of that. You know, every time they put a new one on the website, which is honestly quite often, right? Uh, so that's why I can't stress enough, like, you know, that $22 that you pay to join the website, that is not like anything you ever have to pay ever again. And they are constantly updating that website. So it, it's pretty impressive, honestly, because when I first joined back in January and now it's not even barely 
May yet at the time of the recording of this video. And they've already put out at least 15 more, if not 20 more Sony film simulation recipes since I joined back in January, as well as they're constantly updating the old ones that were already on the website. So it's pretty awesome. Well, first, let me keep showing you what I used back in January on the A7S III. I like to go for photo walks every single day. And I talked about this in my latest video on the Leica M8. Um, if you did not see that, please go check it out. Um, it's It's been an awesome experience shooting on the Leica rangefinder and I talk about all of that over there. But you know, back in January, my Leica was sitting at the Leica New Jersey Service Center. So that's why I was primarily using my A7S III for street photography. And what I like to do is give myself little assignments or like little photo series of things that I'm after. But I was just giving myself the prompt of, um, doing a photo series on my earliest memories, right? So this is kind of abstract because of the nature of that photo series, of earliest memories of being a human being on the planet Earth. I chose the Sony film simulation recipe called Dream Neg, which I don't know, it, it just seemed right. And back in January, it was fairly new to the website. So this will give you an idea of what that particular film simulation recipe looks like. Now that was with the A7S III, so I was able to go directly into the picture profile menu and fully customize it exactly as it's laid out on the website. Here's a little series I did with the black and white uh, Sony film simulation recipe called Cosmo Pan. I like that. Out of all of the black and white uh, film simulation recipes they have on the website, the Cosmo Pan, I just felt like was kind of the best. And as you can see here on the chart, it really does sit right in the middle. I, I don't know, for a while I was obsessed with people always on their cell phones. I know like people on their phones is not really ideal subjects for street photography. It's kind of boring. I was kind of obsessed with it back in January because I was just like, wow, you know, you know, me walking around the camera with witnessing a lot of people with their necks broken and their heads in their phone. And I had my phone nowhere to be found because I was just too busy observing people in the world. And that was just really eye-opening to me, like seeing like, wow, we are like drones out here on these phones. So I just felt compelled to take a bunch of photos of people who had no idea that I was standing next to them. So I just found that kind of interesting. And then w with that same Sony film simulation recipe, I also did this kind of little short series of, you know, babies and their mamas. You know, And it was just really because of the, the location I was at, kind of a a bougie shopping mall outside of LA. Okay, so then and then I messed around with this other uh, Sony film simulation recipe called Fujifilm Forcia 50 or Forcia 50, however you want to say it. It was pretty rad. Now keep in mind with this one, I was using a Tiffin black satin filter on the lens. So it was kind of adding a little bit to it. That's why it's a little bit more bloomy on those highlights, but it kind of does bloom on its own. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, before I had access to this website, I had no idea how customizable the picture profiles were on the A7S III until I tapped into this website and I was like, whoa, you can really customize these things. This Forza 50 uh, film simulation recipe is pretty awesome. And you see here, I mean, this isn't like anything amazing. There's no humanity in these photos, but but it is interesting to see how it affects all those neon uh, lights at nighttime. I thought it was pretty rad. And then I was really uh, interested in the Kodachrome 64. Now they have two different Sony film simulation recipes on the website, uh, two different versions of of Kodachrome 64, they call it. Uh, I believe for my little series I was doing at nighttime, I believe I was using version one. Uh, I'm almost positive it was all version one. In my opinion, there's only one true film simulation for digital Kodachrome, and that is the Leica M8. So again, I encourage you to check out my review of the M8. It's my most recent video before this one. I'll have a link to it down in the description below as well as in the sidebar of this video. But quite honestly, it's no secret why I say that because Kodak did design that CCD sensor for Leica, but we'll be looking at the true digital Kodachrome against the Sony film simulation recipe Kodachrome. Now, this is just um, a weird kind of portrait, actor portrait, that I took of my buddy Tristan Welsh. I took this with the RX1R Mark II. So this is a new thing to the website. They have custom presets for both Lightroom and Capture One. So anyways, we're in Lightroom, but we're gonna look at all these presets because the presets are for sale on the website. Uh, I guess now would be a good time to let you guys know that I was able to set up with the creator of the Sony Film Simulation Recipe website. I was able to set up an affiliation with him. So all of my viewers get 20% off the entire store, right? All you gotta do is use this code, dog times 20, 
and hop over into the website, but don't leave yet. I'm gonna give you the first sneak peek of all of the presets. So this was just more like for fun, but it's cool that we have it in here, as well as I have a bunch of random street photos of just like stuff in the neighborhood, as well as actual stuff with different skin tones. So we can see how these presets uh, look on different skin tones and things and, you know, these old cars and stuff, whatever I have here in Lightroom. But let's first start with this portrait. My favorite Lightroom preset to use on the RX1 R Mark II because that camera is from 2015. Now, if you don't know anything about the RX1 R Mark II, I put out a massive review on it. I'm telling you right now, it is the X100V killer. The RX1 R Mark II is a full frame 42 megapixel sensor. It's, I, I won't talk about that anymore. You'll just have to go watch that video if you're new here. But it hands down, in my opinion, is the only alternative to the Leica Q2. It's the only competition to the Leica Q2. So that is why I use that camera. These Sony Film Simulation Lightroom presets, they're brand new to the website. My favorite one, hands down, is this one called Sony Eterna. It's actually one of the newer ones added to the website. But right here, you can just see all of them. There's so many in here, and there's so many versions of each one, like here, this Agfa Precisa. You'll see there's three different versions of this. There are three different color temperatures, right, based upon whatever color temperature of the setting that you were shooting in, right? So it's cool that they do that. They have those different options. So based upon my lighting for this portrait, I definitely probably would not use the number one because that's a little too yellow and warm. I would probably go for maybe this number two. It's kind of in the middle, right? But I wanna show you Sony uh, Eterna because it is uh, fairly new to the website and I absolutely love it on the RX1 R Mark II. Now, I've been told that these presets, you don't need a Sony camera. You can use these presets with any camera. Uh, whereas the actual Sony film simulation recipes, you know, you would need a, a newer Sony camera to, you know, tap in and th those are catered to uh, the newer picture profile menus of the Sony cameras. So as I'm rolling through here, I'm just trying to find the Sony Eterna. At least these are in alphabetical order. Okay, so we have, so there's the number one. I don't, I can't remember which one I like. Eterna 2 and Eterna 3. I really do feel like the number two is right in the middle of what I like. Okay, so I just really like this. I like how soft it is. If we tag out and go look at where it lands on the chart, it's the only one that's right in the middle. And see, it says tweaked because he's still working on it. It's very, very new to the website. So it's right in the middle of tonality, uh, hardness and softness, as well as right in the middle, right? The saturation is not too high, but it's also not too low. And one thing I, I like to do is I just like to, let, let's fix a few things. So I'm gonna fix the highlights because those are a little strong. I might pump up the whites just a little bit here, and then we might fix these blacks too a little bit. Okay, so I'm just fixing this up a little bit. I might add a little bit of vibrance here just because this is what I like to do. You can see I'm not gonna mess with the color mixture because that's what the preset did. You know, that's for a reason, so I don't really wanna tweak that too much. I might mess with my, my mid-tones a little bit. I might push those and I might bring the highlights more this way a little bit. I'm gonna leave the shadows. They're just starting to go out, but they're not like crushed by any means. Um, because this is a portrait, I'm gonna pull back both the texture and the clarity a little bit. And I might dehaze this just a little bit, and then I might add just a little bit of vignette because it's a solo thing. And then obviously you have to add grain in here. This is really all you need to do though. And the roughness, I like to go 80 on the roughness. So this is what I like to do for grain. 15 and then change the size to 30 and the roughness to 80. And then obviously in here, you know the RX1 R Mark II has already got the lens corrections. And so this is the Sony Eterna and this is the original. This is straight out of camera. So this is with the recipe that I created within the very limited picture profile menus that the RX1 R2 has. And as I showed in my review of that camera, uh, I took a whole day to figure out the best internal recipe I could do to match it with the S cine tone of my A7S III. So this is what it is straight out of camera with the camera light picture profile and then some tweaks on the color filters and all of that. Um, and then this is with the, Eter with the Eterna. It's, it's quite awesome to see the, the, the transformation there. And I didn't do anything. I, I'm not making him pop. The recipe is doing that, right? It really looks like I put a window on him. It really does, honestly, but I didn't. There's no window that's been done there. Um, really nice. I like what it does to his jacket. I love this Sony Eterna preset, specifically for the RX1 R Mark II. Now, I will say, when I was uh, choosing the three for the opening little B-roll video montage of this video, it was one of the ones I used and I just didn't care for it. I didn't care for it on the video side of the A7S III, but with the RX1, I love it for stills. So, you know, you're gonna have some hit and misses there. Um, but you guys, let me know down in the comments below what you think about the three that I chose, the Sony Eterna, 
the EV Pro Plus, the Classic Chrome. So those are the three I use for the video section. Astia is a cool one. That's actually what I'm using for this talking head. This is the Asta Sony film simulation recipe, but the real recipe, you know, fully customized and dialed in into the picture profile settings. So this is Astia and this is the Astia Lightroom preset. And then we have this Classic Cinema. Classic Cinema is a newer one. I kind of like it. I like how like low con it is. I like how low saturated it is. I kind of dig it. It is kind of nice. And the one and two are very, very similar. Now this is a, this one's one of the very brand new ones to the website as well. So it, I think they're definitely still tweaking it. I think they're constantly in a state of evolution though. I mean, they're, they're constantly changing even the, the older ones on there. There's a nice black and white one, Delta 3200. I like that one. That fits that portrait quite well with the jacket and everything. These do need custom white balance and things like that. So. Uh, this is just kind of flying through all of them. There's Zero Mute, and lastly, Zetra. Zetra's nice too, I like the first one. Let's look at some street photo stuff. Like, let's see what it does to this old car here. So, uh, should we do the back end or the front end? This is kind of interesting. I found this old car in the neighborhood, and uh, it had Kansas tags on it, and it's full of cobwebs. I don't know, I like weird shit like this. So, um, I know there's no humanity in this photograph, so it's not exactly, a uh, you know, the best kind of street photo to look at, but it's still fun and we can look at some different presets on this. Let's start at the bottom here. So Sonova, so this is rad, you know, you can kind of instantly get like a timeless look out of the old RX-1, right? I mean, this is nice. And nothing has been added in here yet, no grain, nothing. I like the way the Sonova is handling those highlights. I like this a lot, actually. Sonova is rad, this is a nice one. You know, so that's what I mean. Sometimes it's just picking the right one for the right uh, location or subject matter that you actually photographed, right? That you took a picture of. So it is gonna change. I mean, even Superior 400 looks awesome on this. And that's the thing too, that portrait was a little crunchy. You know, the shadows probably need to be lifted. So, ah, this is nice. This is Vectro 100. Now we're talking, now these are nice. These are really nice. This is looking good on this. Again, this is just very natural flat lighting, just street photo, you know? So I just prefer them in the stills world. I don't really care to use them for video, but I mean, you can go ham. I mean, do what you like, you know? But obviously if you have an older Sony camera, you're not gonna be able to take advantage of that because there's no way to go in there and, and, and fully customize the picture profile menus of some of those older Sony cameras. You certainly can't do it on the RX1R Mark II. Um, but I think a lot of the newer Sony cameras have the ability to fully customize the picture profiles. So here's this Red Scale Ultra. It's not, it's not as bad now that you're seeing it in like this kind of bright daylight setting with the red car. Um, Provia is nice, check that out. That is nice, let's look at that. So now you're seeing some really cool options. Even the Portrait 800, which I'm usually not a fan of, these are looking really cool. This is what I love. This, this is like what I'm saying. This is breathing new life into the RX-1, right? Like this is nice, man. Portrait 160, I like that low saturated look. Octar is a little crunchy there. Here's, oh, so now we're getting to black and white. That's not bad black and white performance. Um, Cosmo Pan, I just like. I just, I like the tonality levels of Cosmo Pan. I like how it sits right in the middle of the contrast. It's nice. And now this Kodak Ultra Max. Wow, look at that, number number five. Kodak Ultra Max 400, number five. That's cool, huh? Yeah, I just think they do an excellent job on these. You know, these presets are really, really nice. If you just check all of these out, they got some nice ones in here. Kodak Color Plus. Here's the Kodachrome. I usually am a big fan of Kodachrome, but not on these Sony film simulation recipes. Sorry to hurt anyone's feelings, but nothing compares the real Kodachrome of the Leica M8. You know, that is the, I mean, that is, that to me is the best digital Kodachrome that you will ever come across. But these are still great. I, I love, I love the majority of these, you know. Obviously, I'm going to be biased against the Kodachrome because it takes a specific sensor to get the look that I'm used to looking at. You know, it takes that specific Kodak like a CCD sensor. Um, look at this though, Ektachrome. This is nice, right? I like, I like, I like this idea of adding this kind of warmth to a daylight photo. You know, I, I like that. I think it's cool. Um, and then here's the Dream Neg. So you can see how it instantly kind of like dulls down the highlights. Um, it fits for certain things, the Dream Neg. And here's the classic negative. And you know, this is like direct competition to the Fujifilm simulation recipes. So this is what I found so exciting about it because I think that is the whole attraction to Fujifilm, right? You're like, man, like it's something in the 
the magic or the romanticism uh, or the nostalgia of, of the Fuji film simulation recipes, right? But now that you kind of have a little taste of it now, I'm not saying that this is going to replace that. And I'm not saying that this is better than, um, I'm not saying one is better than the other at all. I'm just saying this gives Sony users something a little bit more exciting because, you know, Sony, I mean, up until just recently, you know, with the latest iteration of their cameras, I'm talking about the a7S III, the FX3, the FX6, and the FX9. Prior to those cameras, Sony colors were hurting a lot, right? Like even on my RX1, R Mark II, that's why I love having access to these uh, these Lightroom presets because the RX1, R Mark II is from 2015. So it is an older Sony color science, one of the ones that's not really desirable, quite honestly. So now that I have access to all of these Sony film simulation recipes instantly, and just scroll through this huge catalog. I mean, there's so many of them in here, you know, and, it, and it's like, this is rad. You know, you basically have a Rolodex uh, for, I don't know how many of you know what that means. <laughs> uh, I should say library. You basically have a library of just, I mean, unlimited looks here. And, and ideally, you know, mm, film simulation looks, you know, quote unquote, right? So uh, d take it as you may. I really only focus on like composition and things, even though I know this photo is like, oh, this, you know, some people look at this and go, this is horrible composition. What was he thinking? But this is kind of what I do. I did a series recently on my Instagram where I like cutting the parts of the cars off. I had to have seen it somewhere. I know I stole it from somebody somewhere. I know I stole that idea from somebody uh, because I am, I'm, I just regurgitate everything. At least I can be honest with myself and know that I'm just a regurgitation of something else that I consumed at some point. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I can admit that I'm just a product of my environment. But um, so I certainly did not come up, come up with this idea of like chopping off cars, but I, I like the idea of it because to me it's like, it's kind of fresh, you know, because, you know, it's very cliche to take pictures of old cars. Like, it just seems like a cliche thing to do. It's not as bad as, like, taking pictures of flowers, but it's almost as bad, right? So, like, to spice it up a little bit, like, I did a little series on my Instagram where I was, like, cutting them off. And then I added this awesome picture that I took of these dogs that I saw on the street. Uh, but anyways, those were all photos taken with the Leica M8. So they, those don't apply to this specific video. But I was just using those as reference to, like, why uh, my composition with cars is a little weird sometimes. But blue velvet, cine still, I mean, this is another prime example. I usually don't like these, you know, just plugging them directly into the Sony, but seeing them here on the preset, I'm like, oh, this is what these are supposed to be. I don't really care for the number two. Some of them are a little too, like, uh, you know, a little too vibrant for me, but this one's pretty rad. Blue velvet, cine still 50 D1. Okay, so let's jump out. We've seen enough on this car. Let's jump out and kind of dial in and see how it looks on different skin tones, maybe. Um, I, I've been doing this weird thing where like I'm I, I like like to find like couples that are entwined somehow and here's like a twofer right like these guys are all in on each other and then this dude has his hand on her butt you'll see here why I like to choose this for this video is because like they're they're like backlit by the golden hour sun so I don't know if that's going to affect any of these film recipes here um, because it is kind of warm mixed with like a colder internal camera temperature, right? So as you can see here, now there's some contrast because these don't look nearly as good, you know, based upon the settings that I had on the camera, uh, based upon the actual sun in the shot, right? Like the actual color temperature of the location and the subject and the setting itself, right? So this is where I feel like it can be a little bit more challenging finding one of these that kind of fits. Now I know this is Lightroom and these, I mean, you can go in here and make all these tweaks you want. Now this Ektachrome one's not too bad, right? I like how it lifts the shadows because I kind of tend to expose for the highlights uh, a little bit. So, um, you know, sometimes the shadows get a little crushed like this, but you know, as you see here, the, the lesser one of the Ektachrome kind of lifts the shadow out over here, this guy over here, you know? I mean, you could always just fix the exposure too. We could just do this and we could instantly fix it. But still, you know, some of these are gonna struggle, you know, a little bit. Yeah, so this one is not as exciting as we roll through here, is it, you know? So it is very dependent on, you know, the subject that you're photographing. Um, you know, so something that I would suggest doing is if you're gonna use these on any camera of your choice, I'm specifically talking about the Capture One or the Lightroom presets, I would highly suggest, you know, picking out the film simulation recipe that you plan on using later on in post and pre-programming at least the color temperature and the color filter. 
So at least that way you will match because every Sony film simulation recipe beyond the custom picture profile settings, it also has a suggested uh, white balance and color filter, right? And something like my RX1 or Mark II, you can literally only really change the color filter and the white balance. So that would be great to try to match those ahead of time. Now, when I set out, I originally set out a different uh, sim simulation recipe. And just by going through all of these, because I've already looked at these, obviously, I knew like, I don't know, I just landed on Sony Eterna. So I'll show you right now. Yeah, see, I don't know. I just love how it lifts it, accents the golden hour light quite well. I don't know, I just feel like, wow, this, you know, and, and it just, it worked well with every photo, no matter what I was photographing. Like the Eterna, it just, it just pairs really well with um, the RX1 R Mark II. And we can just check it out real quick. Let me just adjust the exposure here. You lift it even more, um, but you'll see my white is clipping out pretty hardcore. We might pull that back just a little bit. We might try to get those highlights fixed. We might just try to push the whites back up just a little bit. We might get those blacks fixed. Um, I'm, this is a horrible photo, but I'm just using this for the lighting reference, right? So, um, so let's just look at the before and after. I think it fixed it a lot, right? It definitely helped it out. Let's get a better photo though. Here's another one, this guy sitting on the bench. I don't know, I liked, I liked the way it looked with the lighting. It was again, that same golden hour lighting. I ran across the street and looked on my phone until he stopped looking at me. <laughs> and, then, and then once he thought I was just waiting on the bus as well, this is a bus stop, believe it or not, directly on the side of the <laughs> road here. But, um, but then uh, as soon as, you know, I just act like I'm on my phone. So he would stop looking at me. And then as soon as he looked away, I took the shot. Um, but let's look at this with the Eterna. Yeah. Not as cool, but I did this superior one's rocking out. This is superior 400, uh, not those ones, but I do like the first one. And I like why, I'll tell you why, because it kind of adds to the warmth of the golden hour light. You know, there are, let's try out Kodak gold because that one is made for the golden hour light. I don't know that, but I just think that because it's a very warm one. So this is Kodak gold. It's a little too warm though. You know, and that's what I mean. I, I think it's a little too much for my taste. Um, let's try this Fuji 400H. A mm, little bit, eh, this one's not too bad. W to me, what I think makes a good photo is, is, is the subject, the composition, the framing, the story that it's telling. Um, a lot of people do get hung up on, on the colors and things, but me, I just, I just want to be able to find something that looks okay. Like I like to use the color as, as an assist but I don't think that you, ooh, <laughs> we're gonna get a little sketchy now. I don't think you, you should be calling yourself a cinematographer if you don't know how to get the look on the day. Now that's just my two cents in it, right? That's just my two cents on it. Um, I know who the hell am I, right? Because I am in no means like some award-winning cinematographer, right? I, I'm not making 1917, but I do think, you know, that title, you know, it demands a certain amount of respect to the craft, right? I will say that. Uh, so I'm gonna end the video there because now we're getting a little wild and these are things that I save for the Patreon world. Speaking of which, I have to give a shout out to this month's producers, Patreon producers, that is Jonathan Arroyo and Scott Myers, and that is a virtual indie filmmaking clubhouse. That's all I'm gonna say about it, and uh, we'll leave it there. But the best way to support the show, obviously, is to just tap that subscribe button, and maybe, you know, share this around, get it, get the word out, you know, because not enough people are talking about these Sony film simulation recipes, and if anything else, just go over there, use the code DOGTIMES20, and, you know, save yourself 20%, and just try them out. Just try them out. That's all you gotta do, and there is a few things for free over on the website. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you whenever we see you. For now, that is a wrap. Okay, folks, this is the ultimate Easter egg right here. I'm gonna show you my favorite picture profile to use on the A7S III. It's the classic negative. So here it is, black level, negative 12. Your gamma set to still mode. Black gamma, you're gonna change to wide and negative seven. Okay, then your knee, you're gonna change your knee to manual mode and then set manual to 75% and the slope to plus two. Okay, and then once you have that, change your color mode to still, change your saturation to negative four, 
change your color phase to negative 5, and then we're going to jump into the color depth. Change your red to plus 3, the green to plus 7, the blue to plus 7, the cyan to plus 5, the magenta to plus 7, and the yellow to negative 3. And then go into your detail, set level to negative 7, and then adjust mode, change to manual, VH balance plus 2, black and white balance is type 1, your limit is 0, your crispening is 7, and your highlight detail is 4. Okay, that is the picture profile for classic negative. And then all you need to do is set your custom white balance to 3700 Kelvin and then change the color filter to A7 and magenta 3. And that is everything you need to know for the classic negative Sony film simulation. You're welcome.